In this video, I'm going to show you how to solve the Alex problem using conservation of energy to predict the qualitative exchange of kinetic and potential energy. So before we tackle this problem, there is just a couple of notes that I want to make I want you to keep in mind. Um, in this problem, you're going to be asked about comparing potential energy, which I'm going to abbreviate PE, versus kinetic energy, KE. Potential energy is defined as the ability to, to do work. And in this particular scenario, which is a bicyclist um, in, a, in a valley, the potential energy is defined as the bicyclist's uh, or the bicycle's ability to coast down the, the valley or the mountain. So in this particular scenario, when you are high, um, at some sort of high elevation, that's going to correspond to a high potential energy. So we're going to say high potential energy is when you are up high um, altitudes on this particular graph over here. Kinetic energy is energy of motion. It's the energy of actually doing something. So it is essentially the opposite of potential energy. So a high kinetic energy, because this is the opposite of potential energy, a high kinetic energy is when you are down at lower altitudes. So let's just kind of make a note here that these are opposites of each other. When potential energy is high, kinetic energy is low and vice versa. So with this in mind, with this information in mind, let's take a look at these different questions that were being asked. Where would the bicyclist have the highest potential energy? The highest potential energy is the highest altitude. So looking at all the different points on the graph, we're going to find the highest point on the graph, which is F. The bicyclist has the highest potential energy at the highest point. Where does the bicyclist have the lowest potential energy? The lowest potential energy is going to be where the altitude is the lowest. So that's going to be point D, the lowest point. When you're down here at point D, there is no option to coast further down because you're already at the lowest point, and that's what potential energy is referring to. Can you coast down this hill? Where would the bicyclist have the highest kinetic energy? So here's where I want you to remember that these are opposites of each other, potential and kinetic energy. So high kinetic energy is low potential energy. So that is going to be point D. And where would the bicyclist have the highest speed? So this just means when is it the bicyclist going the fastest? That's when its uh, kinetic energy is the highest. So let's kind of add this over, make a note of this over here. When we have high kinetic energy, that means we're gonna also have really high speed. The bicycle is gonna be moving really, really fast. And if we had low kinetic energy, we would have low speed. Would the kinetic energy be higher at C or B? So that's these points right here. Um, I always find it easier to be thinking about this in terms of potential energy. So let's take these two points and let's figure out which one has the higher potential energy. C, because it's higher, this has the higher potential energy compared to B. And when we're translating this to kinetic energy, we reverse it. So if we want to know where the kinetic energy is going to be higher, C versus B, if C has the high potential energy, that means that it has the low kinetic energy, low potential energy, high kinetic energy. So C versus B, where is the kinetic energy higher? It's going to be point B. What about potential energy? Oh, cool, because we just figured that one out. C versus B, the potential energy is higher at point C because it's a higher altitude. What about the total energy? So this drop down menu is going to give you not just the letter options um, A through F, but it also gives you the option to choose that the energy is the same. So regardless of the scenario, uh, where, regardless of where you are along this path, the potential energy plus the kinetic energy is some sort of constant. It's um, not necessarily a constant, but it's always the exact same number. So as this bicyclist moves through this path, the total energy is always maintained. The total energy of the bicyclist is always the same 
at point A, at point B, at point C, the total energy is always exactly the same. And then the last question, it says, um, we're starting at point A, let off the brakes and coast down into the valley without pedaling. If there was no friction or air resistance, where what's the farthest point that the bicyclist would go? So you know, in reality, um, because of friction and resistance and things like that, probably if you were coasting down this hill, you'd probably make it around here and then you'd roll back down. But in a perfect world, this bicyclist should be able to get back up to the same altitude where he or she started. So in a perfect world, the bicyclist should be able to coast all the way to point E, and it's asking us for this perfect world scenario. Um, so there is a walkthrough of this particular Alex problem.